guys, what's up? My name is Oh, my boobs. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Deja. If you're new, welcome, and if you're returning, hey, thanks for stopping by. So, I've been seeing this trend going around Twitter and Instagram and even Facebook, if you're still looking there, of people that like to share their unpopular opinions. And I figured, you know what, why not share a few of my own? Because not only do I have a lot, but they're also controversial. <laughs> Little disclaimer. These are my opinions. Let's get into this. Unpopular opinion, number one, Noah Centineo from To All The Boys I Loved Before. Not much to look at. I don't know why you guys are hyping him up so much. Or were hyping him up so much. He, it, he was cute for like 2.5 seconds, but y'all are just dragging it along. Let it go. He's not attractive at all. Instead of giving him all this attention and this much of a platform for all y'all to call him your white boy of the month, let's give that attention to somebody that's more deserving, more talented, more sexy, more just ugh, the whole package. I'm not naming anybody in particular, but this next one is pretty controversial, but I can say it because I'm from here, in and out is not that good. It's not. Never has been. Never will be. It gets overhyped. Literally, I have met people that have traveled across the country to try in and out And I'm like, oh, if you flew, can you get your money back? Because, honey, ooh. The burgers they have and the sauces, you could easily make that stuff at home and make it better. Their fries are always cold and taste like cardboard. in and out is definitely not that good. It's overhyped and people that literally travel from different states and different countries to try it, I feel so bad for you. I am so sorry if I can give you your money back, I would because In-N-Out is not that good, never has been, most likely never will be. On to the next one before y'all come for my throat. Now this unpopular opinion, I feel like it's not unpopular. I feel like a lot of people feel this way, but in the world of K-pop, the one thing that I do not understand nor do I enjoy witnessing is I go. Like, what is that whole concept? I don't get it and I don't like it. Like, especially when male idols do it, I just, I cringe so hard. Look up on YouTube K-pop idols doing I go and you'll see exactly what I mean. Like, it is just the most cringy thing I've ever witnessed. I think the only K-pop groups I can take it from is like BTS and GOT7. Other than that, no. Maybe Shiny, but that's about it. Like, I'll tolerate it, but I'm just not a fan of it. Courage the Cowardly Dog was never scary, y'all just collectively a bunch of wimps. I loved Courage the Cowardly Dog as a kid. That was my jam, that was my show, and the fact that a lot of you guys were scared of it, I'm like, what's there to be scared of? It was a great show, I loved it. Muriel was my girl, she was like the best parent to that dog, she was so sweet. And she was so oblivious to everything, and I just, I loved her. And her husband, he was funny too. The show was great. And if you thought it was scary, you ain't tough. Grow a backbone. Now this one, I think out of all the unpopular opinions that I have, this one will be like the most controversial, the one that'll get me the most side eyes, but I'm gonna say it, I don't like Beyonce. I think she's overrated. There are way more talented people in this industry. Sure, she's talented, but she's not a god. She's not the queen of whatever. She's she's not she's not all that. She really isn't. Like sure she can bust a move. Sure she can dance. Sure she's pretty. But she is so overhyped. And I think going to an HBCU ruined her for me because every time I go out to a party all I hear is say my name, say my name or baby got my love on top, baby. You just one that I love or to the left, to the left, everything you own in the box to the left. Like every time I would hear those songs, I would want to rip out my eardrums or my eyeballs, whichever I could get to first. All this fame and attention and love you give to Beyonce, let's bottle that up and like smother it onto Jessie J because we all know for a fact that Jessie J is criminally underrated, which is my next unpopular opinion. Jessie J is so like disgustingly talented and she's, yes, yeah, she's so underrated. It's like, that doesn't make any sense to me like what oh I don't I don't get it oh I don't get it I don't get it and I hate it I hate it so I hate it and this is an opinion that I think we all collectively 
know it to be true deep down inside. But Little Mix will always, always, always be better than Fifth Harmony. That's just a fact. Like, Little Mix could literally sing and dance circles around Fifth Harmony. Fifth Harmony could never. They will never. They, they can't ever, ever again because they're not even a group anymore. Little Mix, they're still together, going strong. They are the epitome of a badass girl group. They're way better than Fifth Harmony. And that's it. No tea, no shade. It's just, I'm just saying the facts. I, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Everybody talks about how Chick-fil-A fries and McDonald's fries slap, but no one ever talks about the fact that Carl Jr. have the best fries ever. They go so hard. They are so delicious. You can still see like the potato peel on like the end of the fry is perfectly seasoned with salt. It's always hot and they stay hot for a long time. I sound so fat right now, but Carl's Jr. has the best fries. You can't say anything else. I refuse to believe anything else. Shut up. I'm going to say this once loud and clear for the people all the way in the back. <clears throat> And so is Troy Sivan's Bloom. Two of the best albums this year. And y'all didn't give it the time of day. And I am triggered. That is so upsetting. Five Seconds of Summer were gone for like, what, two years? When they came back, they slapped so hard. Youngblood, I still listen to that album at least once every single day. Without fail. Without fail. Same goes with Troy Sivan's Bloom album. It's so personal. It's so... Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so sweet. It's so heartwarming. It's so freeing. It's like, oh my god, Troy, I love you. Uh, literally, Five Sauce and Troy did that in 2018. And y'all are asleep. And I am disappointed. I am disgusted. We gave artists like Little, little Zan. Is that what is? No, not Little Zan. The other one. Who was the other one that looks like Skittles? You know what I'm talking about. Six Nine, the guy that looks like Skittles. I think that's him. We gave artists like that attention and other irrelevant people. But no, y'all really had the nerve to sleep, to slumber upon Troy Sivan and Five Sauce. We need to give respect to our Aussies when it's due. How dare you? Speaking of music, Sweetener by Ariana Grande was a hot ass mess. I said it, I said it. it. The album didn't make sense. It wasn't good. Sure, hey, God is a woman, okay? God is a woman, but Ariana, what was that? Like that that song you did with Pharrell, Blazin', is that what it's called? That didn't make any sense. Like. I like it to be consistent. I like there to be a story. I like I like to have that the title tracks, you know, kind of tie in with the name of the album or like the theme. Like one album that I absolutely loved this year was Rituals by Death Havana because every song like tied into the idea of religion and like worship and things like that. So there's a song called Wake, there's a song called um, Sinner, there's a song called Hell, there's a song called Heaven, there's a song called Pure, there's a song called Worship, there's a song called um, Epiphany. Like they all tie to the theme of religion and it made sense like even like in the production of each song everything came together in such a beautiful way and it just made sense. But with Sweetener, like you go from Blazin', which I assume is a song about smoking the devil's lettuce, to singing about the light is coming to give back everything the darkness stole, which made me want to rip out my eardrums. Like, I, don't... I didn't get it. And don't get me started on Pete Davidson. Like, y'all, when I tell you I knew that was going to end from the jump, like, when I saw that she named a whole song after him, I'm like, oh, honey. Oh, my God. No. Why? I was just so... Uh, I was upset. I was like, Ari, you're not that stupid, are you? But, ooh, that sounds so bad. But, like, y'all know what I mean. Like, we all, we, we, we all been knew that that was not gonna last. There was no way. There was no way! Sweetener was a hot ass mess. I love you, Ari, but wow. We all love Disney, right? There's no way that you can't love Disney, at least one movie. But the one thing that makes Disney so memorable is the music that they put into their movies. Which brings me to my next point. My favorite Disney soundtrack of all time is the Tarzan soundtrack. I do not care what you have to say. Sure, The Lion King was great. Like, Elton John did some songs, which makes it iconic, but like, 
Nothing will ever compare to the Tarzan soundtrack. You know why? Because the entire thing was done by Phil Collins, who is a legend and deserves respect. So if you have the nerve to say that the Tarzan soundtrack is not good, I will slap you clear across the face, even through my camera. Try me. That soundtrack goes hard and I refuse to change my mind. So if you want to hear some bops that are timeless, listen to the Tarzan soundtrack and be blessed. Next, icing is by far the worst thing to put on a cake. I know, I know you're probably thinking, Deja, what else would you put on a cake? Whipped icing. Like the whipped icing you get on tres leche cake and it's all moist and delicious and like the whipped icing is just perfect. Like, it makes me happy every time I think about it. It's like, wow, I'm like salivating, but I love, 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 love whipped icing on cake because it's not too heavy it's actually super light and it's a lot yummier so that's the superior alternative to icing fight me on that if you want to paramore's decision to chop misery business from their set lists forever was by far the dumbest decision and the reason why was even worse. People were really up in arms with Haley for lyrics that she wrote when she was 16. And I don't think you guys realize that this woman is about to be 30, so I can guarantee you that her mindset is not the same as it was when she was 16. It's a bop. It's an iconic song that everybody and their mother knows. Whoa, I never meant to brag, but I got it where I want it now. Like, that's iconic, okay? I know I, I don't have the vocals, trust and believe. I knew. The decision to cut Misery Business from Paramore's set list indefinitely was the dumbest thing to ever happen this year. And that's the tea, sis! Hmm. This one is very upsetting, but you know what? I'm just gonna say it. Not everybody on YouTube can sing. Take that however you want it. But if we're thinking the same people, then we're here. We know, we know who I'm talking about. I can't, I can't even think of them all off the top of my head, but y'all know who I'm talking about. All those YouTubers that swear up and down they can sing or like they're the next Mariah Carey. Oh, not every YouTuber can sing, so please stop. Oh my God, that's like, mm, I hate that. This TV show is a pop culture phenomenon and I don't know why, because if anything, that show is like on a scale of one to 10, I'd say it's a one and a half as far as like relatability and being funny and being memorable. And I know you know what I'm talking about. Friends. Literally, why is Friends overhyped? It's not that good of a show, not by a long shot. I think I've laughed at it once. Maybe once. I don't even remember what it was about. Like, it's not memorable. It's not funny. It's not relatable. It's annoying. It's like overly hyped. Like, what? There's nothing memorable about Friends. Absolutely nothing. Except for the fact that Jennifer Aniston still looks hot. Okay? That's it. That is literally the only thing that I remember about Friends is that Jennifer Aniston still looks good all these years later. But as far as like sitting down and watching it, I've done it. I've tried to do it so many times. But I literally would just cringe and get itchy. Like, for all y'all are just hyping up friends so much, I don't get it. Same goes for like shows like Grey's Anatomy, freaking Riverdale. Those shows are not that good, and the hype that they're getting is annoying. There are some other TV shows that deserve a lot more recognition. Just not friends, not Grey's Anatomy. Y'all know what I mean. All those shows that are iconic and, you know, everybody knows and loves, guess what? Not everybody loves and enjoys them. And that is all my unpopular opinions. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you maybe thought about what I had to say and agreed on a couple things that I said. And if not, sound off below. Tell me your unpopular opinions to see if we can find common ground and agree. But until I see you guys again next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.